Today we are working on this uh, 2013 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 with the 5.3 liter uh, V8. Customer's complaint is that it has the check engine light. It flashes when it runs so it's misfiring and also it has a loud tick noise. There's no secret that these are known for having lifter issues, possible cam wear issues, so on and so forth. So this isn't going to be anything earth shattering. Most likely we have one of those situations going on. I'm just bringing you guys along to show some basic testing methods that can be applied with situations like this to just help identify or to just see when a known faulted state is present what things will look like as far as uh, some of the waveform signals that can be gathered and because it is possibly going to be a known situation of what is at fault you can learn from this to be able to apply it on others where it's not so common to be a valve train issue so first things first I scanned it and these are the two codes that are present it has a generic O3, PO300 not specific to any cylinder and then the engine oil pressure uh, trouble code as far as what I want to test and or look at I want to start by first doing a cold engine again cold engine crank no start and measure the intake manifold pressure waveform synced with uh, ignition cylinder one I am also capturing the exhaust to see if anything uh, odd is in the tailpipe waveform and I have also synced the relative compression on the battery but again first crank no start cold engine see what that looks like and go from there Okay, so we'll do crank no start. And I'm cranking for a long time. Okay, so here is the capture of the uh, cold cranking. And again, remember, we are doing this in order to check the basically health of the uh, engine, the mechanical health, the state that it's in. We want to see how it's breathing in and out, um, compression, how it's building across all cylinders, try and get as much information all at once, knowing that we have some sort of mechanical noise going on. So we want to try to see why or where that, that noise is. Or why the noise is occurring and right off the bat we can see and if you're familiar we're seeing intake pulses uh, which is if I break down the channels green is going to be intake purples exhaust red is ignition sync one the blue is relative compression on the uh, on the battery amp clamp and as I was saying here on the green you can see what I refer to as just uh, anomalies that are repetitive. And this is from a little bit of a far off view. The uh, exhaust seems to look consistent and so does the uh, relative compression. Nothing where you see basically a cylinder drop out. If we take a look at what most of us are probably familiar with, relative compression. Again, nothing too crazy. You see a little bit of waviness, but nothing where basically singles out a cylinder. So if you were to just do a sink and relative compression, this is what you're going to see. You're not really going to get pointed to an anomaly or to a cylinder uh, specifically. If we back out again, exhaust, nothing that's to the point where the, the 
the peaks differ so great that you want to go look at a specific cylinder. But as I was saying, we come here to the intake and you see something that's repetitive. And what you're seeing here, you definitely don't want to see because you're wanting to have all equal and even intake pulls from all cylinders and at the same uh, amounts and levels. Here you have one that is way, way off. It's going to affect the following one or it looks like it's affecting the following one, but it should not be this far off. This, so now here on the intake trace, based off this mechanical uh, state of health test that we are doing, we see an anomaly and something is uh, leading us towards why the intake is doing this. Now, we have, that's what we have to figure out, why the intake is coming off like this. So with the intake trace looking the way that it does, next thing you want to do, let's uh, let's try to identify which cylinder. So with that, we'll use the ignition sink and the firing order. And so we have for the firing order one eight seven two six five four three. And as far as finding your uh, intake pulses you go to the 360 mark from where you are synced and over to the right that is the pull for the one that you are synced on so if we are on one so this is pull for one eight uh this would be seven and then uh two so in this pull column we'll call it for number seven is where we're seeing this anomaly of a, a great rise in uh, pressure in the intake manifold so now that we know the cylinder we have to find out why there is a rise in pressure in the manifold at that point and so now the next thing i want you to look at is I'm doing cranking in cylinder in a cylinder that is a non-problematic uh, and it's cylinder number three. And the important part to look at that I want to point out to you is here at down at the bottom, green is still going to be your intake trace. The blue is going to be the um, in cylinder for number three. Now, again, this is what would be considered a known good and ideal capture. After you build compression, it comes down to the expansion, exhaust valve opens, uh, pressure then stabilizes for atmospheric level, and then you've got a little dip here where your intake uh, section, intake area would begin, and it stays stable until pressure rises, that's from intake valve closing, and then it builds compression again. And there we see that rise in pressure. And one could potentially get confused and say intake valve for cylinder three is a leaking during compression and bleeding off pressure into the intake manifold which I have seen before and is a possibility, but you have to look at everything um, and I'll show you why. And again, remember we, we are dealing with a mechanical noise issue also. And so we're trying to determine everything as far as what's occurring and how to make sense of all these captures and not get confused. Now, if you take a look at this capture, this is the same Crank no start, but in cylinder, and we are in cylinder on number seven. And I've got, again, green is intake, and then blue is going to be in cylinder seven. Now, right off the bat, you can see a difference between this capture and the known good of cylinder three. The big, big point 
area that stands out is this guy right here. Now, if you correlate that, look at this event here. So there's there's something going on both in cylinder and in the intake manifold that is happening at the same time. You can correlate the two together. And so I want to try to explain uh, what we're seeing as far as what, what these captures are telling us. Okay, so I want you to follow me here with this. We'll try to explain what's going on or why this looks this way. And the only reason why, again, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse with such a common known failed issue on an LS with lifter problems. But I want to explain this because for myself, I used to question it or if you see it in another engine, then it'll make sense or you'll know why you're seeing what you're seeing more, particularly in the in cylinder. So fo follow along. So here in this column, you know, you build compression, top top that center, piston starts to come down, and then exhaust valve opens, stabilizes the atmospheric during the exhaust stroke. This column here is going to be an intake column, intake stroke for this cylinder, and then compression stroke here again. And so what we are seeing here now, the last known good does have a dip, but then it stabilizes. It, it doesn't drop off as much, and but it stays level straight across until the valve closes. So what we're, what we're seeing here, this is 360. So the piston on the exhaust stroke is traveling up. At 360, it changes direction and comes down. And we also see this trace coming down and like we did in the previous one, but this stays traveling downward all the way up to this point where we see a change of direction. And then this here on the intake, it's traveling upwards up until this point where we see a change in direction. And then this goes up to this point and it changes direction. And again, this down to this point and then kind of changes direction again. So from here to here is, and here to here, that what we are seeing at those two points is that is the amount of time that the intake valve is open. It opens here and closes here. And how do I know that? Or why do we see this? So. The rise in pressure on the intake manifold trace is not due to intake valve leaking on cylinder three during compression, but instead what we are seeing is a rise in pressure from a delay of a pull. So you gotta think about that. There, there's no activity going on as far as vacuum pulls in the manifold. So because the pressure can't stay steady, basically the vacuum can't stay steady, and it's in a stagnant point, it's slowly ri rising until a pull occurs. So it's not from positive pressure being introduced, it's from a delay in time of vacuum pull occurring, so it slowly rises. And how do I know that? because you look down here, this now downward travel of vacuum being increased in the cylinder up until this point where vacuum is released, it can only be released if the intake valve came off of its seat and now vacuum cannot be created any further because we create a leak once that valve lifts off its seat and ties into the manifold and because there's deep vacuum here in the cylinder that vacuum then gets introduced and pulls down this higher pressure down to a lower pressure from connecting uh, this point to this point and then so this will stabilize this will raise up because we're losing vacuum in the cylinder this travels down to create more vacuum in the manifold up until this point. Now you see 
this key here point in the in cylinder how the travel then goes this way back down um, this stabilizes and then it starts to raise up again at this point the intake valve closed and how do I know that because still in this column this whole column the piston is traveling downwards and if both valves are closed like they were this whole time it vacuum will be created at this point we already know the exhaust valve is closed but if the only way to create downward travel again in this same column during the intake stroke of this cylinder is for the intake valve now to be closed now we start creating vacuum again and look at where and when that changes direction upwards is right when it crosses the line what happens there piston comes down 540 changes direction starts to go up that is what we are seeing here this this used to play tricks with me because first you have this point that looks odd then you have this point that that is a wavy a downwards wave and then it comes back up but that that's what's going on you you come down deep because both valves are closed you release pressure from opening the intake valve pressure then changes again after it stabilizes or raises and then dips back down into another loop that's what's going on though it's a lot of changing directions within the small amount of time which can play uh, tricks with you in your head but that is that is the explanation of it and then that the breakdown of the intake manifold pulls is again due to what's going on and what we're seeing here and this small amount of time let's see so again, again, you can see it, the moments tie in together, here and here, 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 and so for 26, 26 degrees of time is how long the uh, intake valve was open. And then this is obviously not normal, and is. A result of a failed um, lifter and it's going to be a failed intake lifter we know the exhaust is not being affected we can verify that by the exhaust pulses while how they all looked pretty much um, the same across across a long amount of time we know the intake trace had an anomaly and looked had a repetitive odd looking point and with the in cylinder in the known good and this number seven which we went into seven after seeing the pull for seven looked different or was affected we then can compare the two in cylinders and then be able to explain and find out what is going on in the overall picture so basically now after doing a bunch of cold Cranking testing um, with the waveforms that we went over. I want to just let the car do a cold start idle. I currently still have the two in cylinder on cylinder three and seven just because I had them from testing on cold cranking. So I'm going to let it run that way first. Then I'll remove those once it starts to get a little bit hot and try to just then analyze as how the uh, customer would normally have it all plugs in and everything and misfiring on I'm assuming seven but for now in cylinders three and seven still have intake still have exhaust but I actually also have added two microphones one on each valve cover bank to bank and just to show you That is bank one on the gray channel. And that is actually 
vice versa. So the first gray channel is bank two, blue is bank one. Just curious to see how we're going to pick up the noise of the uh, lifter. So also trying to show how um, this can be useful for trying to identify engine noise with uh, the scope as well. Okay, so this will be a first start and run. You can already, as I can hear it here on the uh, driver's side. Capture. And now, lastly, that it's uh, starting to warm up after testing and cylinder running, I've put the plugs and spark plugs back together. It is now going to be running as how the customer would experience it and bring it in. We're going to be looking for noise, try to identify noise with mics if we can place them properly. If we were to just do this right off the bat without going in cylinder and knowing what the problem was, so on and so forth. So now we will crank for the last capture. Everything's put together. And we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so next I want you to take a look at this waveform. This is when I started it and let it idle with in cylinder number three in number three and in number seven. Uh, first thing I wanted to point out is, so in the blue is gonna be cylinder number seven, purple is gonna be cylinder number three, green is gonna be intake. Uh, but for now, just right off the bat, I want you to take a look at this and how the pressures start off so blue again is cylinder seven so it it's able it goes off the chart it's over 90 psi and then right off the bat it drops down here to uh say somewhere around 30 and down 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 until i guess it stabilizes um the good cylinder number three it goes off the chart and then stabilizes somewhere around the i don't know maybe 70 psi but if, again, this is why it's important to, you know, graph out on the waveform because if you were using a mechanical gauge, this could throw you off because it's going to stay stuck at the highest pressure it ever captured and you'll never see the lower pressures. Now, this is while starting and running. Uh, if you were to do it with mechanical gauge, you should have the bleed off valve pushed off so it, it won't hold pressure, but... Um, during cranking on some that I see that are faulted are able to on the initial build a lot of pressure and then uh, bleed off or create lower and then so you're stuck thinking with a mechanical gauge that you have more pressure being built than what you do. So that's the first thing. Second, um, let's see, just for comparison, let's get some numbers. So once looks like it stabilizes somewhat, we'll get some pressure readings, which it's pretty crazy based on the way it, I guess it sounds, yes, it's loud and ticking, but it's, it's not so much of a dead, dead miss, like a dead hole, it's just uh, way off and different than pressure, so we've got about 78 PSI and 16 on on the bad one. So big, big, big difference. And even when we rev it up to try to build pressure, the, uh, the one with the bad lifter barely even gets off of what it was making. And one time only it peaked at uh, 27. So it's clearly not doing its job it's not able to build enough compression and that's because the intake valve is just open not long enough it's delayed in opening and it closes early and because of that it can't build 
compression. It's just, it, it's just not enough. It's closing way too early in negative. It's closing way too early while it's still in negative, uh, in the in cylinder, and so it can't build po high positive pressure. Now the other thing that I wanted to introduce was the microphones. If you were to start a vehicle up, let it idle, and connect it with just the microphones, I wanted to show you what this is going to look like. Blue is going to be bank one microphone valve cover. The gray here is going to be bank two microphone valve cover. As far as where number seven is, it's there on the right side, which is going to be right side to us looking at it on screen. It's the furthest one back. It's on bank one, which is driver's side. So seven is on bank one. Okay, so this is getting kind of busy, but I want to uh, point out a couple of things. So let's um, get rid of the known good cylinder and we're going to concentrate on cylinder seven which is the bad one which is here in the the lighter blue now one area i want you to look at so i've i've vertically enhanced the trace uh, so here's compression compression it's still all the same psi it's just the uh, enhanced on the vertical scale to make it easy we'll go top that center to top that center and I want you to look at this area here so here's this is the expansion exhaust intake compression so intake trace this is while running we go into deep vacuum intake valve opens pressure goes up Intake valve closes, goes back down, still within the same stroke, until it then will change direction. So look, this blip point here, and if we compare that with the known good, there's that blip portion, and here's the intake on three. It pulls down, stays stable, uh, just like how it was during cranking. Again, this is running. This is what you see. This is known good. This is intake pull area section. And you see another anomaly like we did during cranking. Now, if we look at both microphone channels, this is going to be capturing noise. And this, remember, this is on both banks, one one on each bank. And yes, we're seeing noise events being captured at the same time. So noise is is loud enough to where it's traveling through the casting of the motor, and it's being captured on both banks, valve covers, microphones that we have. But if, if you haven't noticed yet, remember, we said blue is on bank one, gray is on bank two. Look at the difference. What do we see here? Like double events in that one event. We are, we're not seeing that. It's not defined here on bank two. It's clearly defined here on bank one. We're capturing noises from the engine ticking. It is a lifter tick, and we're seeing noises on both banks, but they're distinctively different. This is now, if you were to only do this, then because what we're seeing here, this can lead us to pick the correct bank. Bank one is having this double anomaly during the same event, so then we can forget about that. And hopefully up to this point, with everything I've been explaining, what would you think this is? So you've got a big noise event, and almost right away another big noise event. Again, big noise event, and almost right away another big noise event.
if we now tie these two captures together with the external just tapped into the top of the valve cover with an internal in cylinder engine pressure measurement that we are taking look at what we see remember what I told you happens here so this deep vacuum pull boom intake opens another change pressure intake closes that is two noise events that are tying themselves with that pressure change down at the bottom just a little more clear and this just reiterates and everything just ties in together we here on the microphone trace are seeing visually seeing with noise what is going on in the in cylinder pressure changes from a mechanical failure from a bad lifter we see it in the intake manifold trace we see it in the in cylinder pressure trace and we're seeing seeing it in a noise trace captured on both valve covers but the bank that it's on we see the double event of opening and closing of the intake valve from the failed lifter And then again, maybe just lastly, just to tie in the, that one other trace, there is the intake pulse trace. They're in the same idle capture. There's the, the noise trace. Here's the end cylinder. But look at the intake manifold. It's rise in pressure in the manifold. It's anomaly. It's happening all right there. A little more clear but there and, and you know rise pressure and then change so again ties in with all same two points so three different captures that can tell us what is going on inside the engine from a mechanical fault whether it's in the intake manifold in the end cylinder or just externally tapped onto the valve cover with a microphone. All that is telling us the same thing and all through the power of the scope and capturing waveforms and just trying to hit a nail in, in on the head. It's it's just crazy what you can see and do with the scope. So again, to uh, like I said, as we uh, determine, and to no surprise, with the common commonality of the failure of these type of lifters, just wanted to get a shot of the uh, the new one installed on cylinder seven intake, and a quick shot of what it looks like. You know, just like uh, we've seen a million times. There is the uh, packaging for the one singular new one. Push rod and everything seems to be okay. And it is okay simply uh, lifter collapsed failure. Now you might ask why I am only doing one being that it's such a common issue. And you are correct. And the reason why is, and I have not um, mentioned this yet before, I didn't want to deter the diagnosis but uh, almost to the T a year ago I did all lifters with the AFM the active fuel management ones and the regular standard lifters for the same issue and actually it was on uh, bank one at that time and this was done through the customer has uh, one of these uh, warranties that uh, cover some of these failures so at that time, the warranty did actually end up covering repairs related to the uh, passenger side, which is uh, bank two. The customer at that time on his own decided to additionally pay out of his pocket and do this side since warranty was only covering that side. So now we are at a point where 
and, and I, I replaced them with factory GM as as I'm doing now all factory GM as you can see we even did new plugs and everything all factory stuff so if it comes down to when ordering parts ahead of time or trying to identify with the scope we are able to singularly specifically identify the failed area component part and order just one lifter a head gasket and head bolts as for now the customer is only wanting to replace only what has specifically failed and not do all again um, just because he already went through that so that is the reason why at this time and moment for some reason the original other GM lifter did not last but just a year um, but again this is why I am only doing what has failed at this time and only doing one lifter so uh, I mean power of the scope will let you get that get down to that fine specific uh, diagnosis of pinpointing one unit fail failure and will allow you to order just specific parts if need be well so not to overdo this and bore you over a, a common failed issue uh, that has been um, documented I'm sure a million times I just wanted to look at waveforms based off of a known issue and, and try to uh, break those down and give some information based on what I saw. And again, this is just to learn on what you know what is going on as far as failure so you can apply it to other situations where it's not a vehicle that has such a common problem. Just this is how I practice, this is how I learn, and this is what I am uh, attempting to explain to let others know uh, what I am finding with the capture so I don't think I need to get a shot of this vehicle completed and running we know it's gonna run fine after the replacement the cam lobe is actually fine that by the looks of the roller there is no cam damage so simply we'll get it put back together get it running and get it back to the customer so i hope you enjoyed all the breakdowns of the waveforms again not meaning to bore you with such a common failure issue uh, i don't like to go about um, trying to film common things but I'm, i wanted to add that twist of information from a common failure so thank you for watching as always I'll get this wrapped up and then uh, we'll move on to the next one.